Well, now looky here. Another greenhorn pioneer all set to head out on the trail. Nice to meet you. Hey, you know, there's uh, four folks in that covered wagon over there. They're all set to go, but they, they need one more person to join them. Be interested? You, you, you go on over there, huh? Talk to them. Now, there's also quite a few folks that are looking for somebody to organize a wagon party. Uh, would you like to meet them? Uh, they're in the hotel right over there. Door's open. Or if you like, I can tell you all about Independence, Missouri and the Oregon Trail. Well, now, I can see your person likes to take your time. You do that. You visit the hotel or uh, the store. <laughs> the newspaper office is right over there. You mosey around all you want. But remember, it's a long journey. You don't want a too late a starter. You'll end up like that Donner party. Good luck to you. Here, I hear tell us how the Oregon Territory is plumb full of big fat pigs just running around already cooked. Well, when you're hungry, you just stick your knife in the side and carves off a juicy hunk. <laughs> Yeah, you know, if it wasn't for this thing, I'd be going out there to get me a taste. At ten years, I've been in Independence. <laughs> and back then, it was just a few log houses and grog shops and general store. Yep, we had ourselves a quiet, peaceful little town. <laughs> that thing's different now. Seems like a whole world is passing through here on their way out west. I suppose you heard about that Donner party from a couple years back. Those folks, they had real bad luck. First off, it was late getting going on the trail. Uh, middle of the summer it was. Had <laughs> their wagons. I mean, they were so loaded down, the oxen about busted their guts just pulling them out of town. Sure as eggs is eggs. The Donners got snowbound in the mountains and run out of food. A story around here is that the ones that died ended up getting eaten by the ones that lived. Those Whitmans they didn't have much luck neither. Oh, there was a nice enough pair, the missionaries there was, Narcissa Whitman. Uh, she was the first white woman to make it all the way out west, you know. And more than 10 years ago. Well, the Whitmans was trying to convert the Cayuse Indians to their way of thinking, religion-wise. But uh, here's where the bad luck comes in. Uh, the Whitmans brought measles with them. Pretty near wiped out the whole village. Now, out of revenge, or maybe just to protect themselves, the Cayuse killed the Whitmans. But you know what? News like that ain't stopping nobody from heading west. The trail's mighty hard on wagons. It's hard on people, too. If when the cholera don't get you, you don't drown in one of them rivers, I, you might just starve to death. A few years back, a thousand people left Independence all at once. They called it the Great Migration. Seems like every year now, twice as many folks head west as the year before. Every wagon's loaded down with supplies and filled to the top with dreams. Yeah, the trail's full of wagons and dust. There's tribes of Indians, herds of buffalo, days of heat and nights of cold. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, I got carried away there a bit. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like I was saying, there, there's a wagon party right over there looking for one more person to join them. And there's some uh, folks over in the hotel lobby and waiting for somebody to organize a wagon party. You best get going and quit listening to no codger like me. <laughs> Pick your traveling partners wisely. 
trail ain't no place to find out about a person you should have known about before casting your lot with them. Good afternoon. My name is Patrick Matson. I'm a journalist and I write for the local paper. You may have seen me around town talking with some of the pioneers preparing for their journey out west. Take advantage of the forts along the way for respite from the hardships of the journey. Visit the new Fort Kearney, open just this year to assist travelers on their way out west. I think that Lanford W. Hastings should be thrown in jail for advocating that shortcut to California in his guidebook, a shortcut that he himself had never explored. The Donner Party tried Hastings' shortcut, and less than half of them survived. By the time the rest were recovered by search parties, many of them had gone mad. I was a student of the law back east. It can be argued that Lanford W. Hastings is legally liable for what happened to those desperate people trapped in the foothills of the Sierra Nevadas. What a tragedy. Can you imagine what the Donner Party went through? Crossing the grassless salt desert, abandoning their precious animals that one by one dropped from exhaustion and starvation finally reaching the Sierras, only to find the passes blocked by snow and impossible to traverse. Being stranded there through the brutal winter with inadequate shelter and dwindling supplies, watching as members of their party weaken and perish from illness, hunger, and freezing temperatures. Forcing some who remained to resort to cannibalism in order to survive. You know, several years before he wrote that guidebook, Lanford W. Hastings was abducted by a band of Sioux. It's a shame his wagon party didn't simply abandon him then. If his traveling companions had only withheld their ransom and left Lanford W. Hastings to his fate, 42 members of the Donner Party might still be alive today. Goodbye, and good luck with your preparations. Welcome to Independence. Timothy Saunders, but just call me Tim. You got that look in your eye, heading west, ain't you? Well, what can I do you for? This town sure has changed a lot since folks started heading west. Oh, just a few years ago, a fella could lie down and take a nap, smack dab in the middle of Main Street, at high noon if he wanted to. Not no more. You see, all types heading west, drifters, families, con men, don't trust nobody farther than you can throw them, I say. You'll go a long way following that advice. One time, I remember it like it was yesterday. A big old mountain of a man come in here, bought pretty near everything in the store. Said he was going to open up his own trading post a couple of hundred miles west of here. Well, I can't stand around flapping my gums all day. What can I get for you?
how do? Billy Barnes, the name. I bet you're wondering what all this is. It's surveying equipment. Surveying's mostly what I do. As you can see, I'm not particular about getting dirty. So you best be favoring my upwind side. I'm strong as an ox, quick as a rabbit, sharp as a fox. Tussled with and beat just about anything land or water can throw at me. I can tell you, either with the naked eye or one of my instruments, just how far it is and the best way to get to anywhere you can point a finger. Even play a tune when we're ready to put the day to bed. It's a fine day to leave for Oregon. I'd like to travel in your party. My folks had no room for me in their wagon, but I hope to catch up with them along the trail somewheres. I'm 18 years of age and strong. I'm a fair hand with all manner of tools, having been a carpenter's apprentice for the 12 months past. I helped my pa with the animals on the farm. Welcome! You're here to organize a wagon party, aren't you? The guests here have been waiting for someone like you. I've taken the liberty of drawing up a contract. Fill it in with the names of your partners as you choose them. You can talk with them now. Choose your traveling companions wisely. Travel has a way of bringing out the best and the worst in people. Most of our guests are fine, upstanding citizens. A few, however, seem a bit questionable. Like they say, there's no surer way to find out if you like people than to travel with them. Just because someone wants to jump in a covered wagon and head west doesn't mean you should pick them. You need to consider how they can help you get to Oregon. Look, it's like running this hotel. You can't have ten managers. You need people to carry the bags, cook the food, wash the linens, keep the books, and greet the guests. On the Oregon Trail, you'll also need people who have a mix of skills. I'm not saying traveling the trail requires the same kinds of skills as running a hotel. It's the variety I'm talking about. You might need trading or doctoring skills, or someone who's good with a gun, or folks that know their way through wilderness. Howdy! My name's Morgan. Randall Morgan. I make my money mostly as a tracker, but I've picked up more than a dollar doing a little bit of just about anything. You getting them wilds gonna need me. I heard things. Beasts and outlaws that'll hunt you down and then tear flesh from your bones. Well, I ain't seen either. But I'll tell you now, I'll whoop the both of them. I can track them, hunt them. I know the river. I've had all the plants from wild pie plant to gooseberries a man can eat, and knows them you can't. Heard tell as them rivers ain't like ours. Instead of water, they flow with the gold, tiny gold. I got me the tools to scoop it all up, 
gonna get rich, and you too if you want. Hello, I'm a farmer. Name's Jefferson Goldsmith, but just call me Jeff. I hail from back east. I'm taking my family out west to the big land of Oregon. I get on well with animals. They, they take to me somehow, and I know how to heal them and take care of them. My wife Sally's good with folks, and her cooking will knock your boots off. I know a good bit about blacksmithing and animal tracking. And I'll tell you what, Sally here's about the best shot I ever saw, man or woman. If you take us along, you won't be sorry. Pleased to meet you. My name's Sally Goldsmith, and I'm a farmer's wife. My husband's name is Jefferson. We've left our farm in Ohio and are moving out west to stake out a farm in Oregon. I like to cook and take care of people. Jefferson's good with animals and an expert farmer. I'm also a crack shot and a good businesswoman. Jeff does some tracking and is a handy blacksmith. Please take us with you. We're honest, hardworking, and always willing to help other folks out. <laughs> Thanks for choosing us. We won't let you down. Good day. If you have the time, I will tell you a little about myself. At home, I was a teacher. I have completed my 17th year. I have a little money. I know something of the trail and the wild plants that grow along the way, for I have read many books. Please, do not think that I will be too frail to withstand the rigors of the journey. I lived my childhood years on a farm and can lend my hand to many chores. I can tend to most animals. I am eager to begin a new life in Oregon. I hope you will choose me to be your traveling companion. Good day to you. My name's Casey O'Neill. I'm looking to go to Oregon with someone after me own heart. Will you take a strong, hard-working Irishman in your wagon? If it's a butcher or a blacksmith you'd be wanting, then I'm your man. For I can do both, and I can even turn me hand to a bit of sewing when there's a need. Is it I'm a bit lanky, you'd be thinking? Well. I'm as strong as any man here, and I'd like to see the man who says I'm not. Sure, it's a fine asset I would be to your company. Boy, I could get out me fiddle and play a few jigs whenever spirits need a lifting. Father O'Leary said I was the finest fiddler in the whole of County Kerry.
I must be thanking you for choosing me. It's a grand day to be going on such an adventure. My name is Austin Billings. I'm trying to make my way to Oregon. Wondering if you done made your choice yet. Is there still room in your wagon going out west? I'm good with my hands. I work with iron and I work with wood. I'd be strong, real strong. Uh, ain't never been sick once in my natural born life. <laughs> I picks up things fast. Ain't never got to tell me nothing twice. I ain't asking for no handout. Be willing to work my way to Oregon. <laughs> Thank you kindly for bringing me on board. <laughs> Thank you. I am Brown Fox of the Ka Nation. Some people call us Kanza, but we prefer Ka. What more do you want to know? I see wagon after wagon coming by here, crossing this creek. Where are all of you going? 
You take too much with you. You must be going very far. I am Brown Fox of the Ka Nation. Some people call us Kanza, but we prefer Ka. What more do you want to know? An old trail went from the great river you call Missouri, far to the south, right through the heart of our lands. The trail was used by many hunters and traders. You now call it the Santa Fe Trail. I am Brown Fox of the Ka Nation. Some people call us Kanza, but we prefer Ka. What more do you want to know? I see wagon after wagon coming by here. Howdy, Pilgrim. Hattie Caulfield's name. I reckon you done took me for a man when you first laid eyes on me. Well, look again, I ain't no hairy-faced fella. Of course, I ain't no gusset-up, bonnet-wearing, pie-making female, neither. I just am what I am, and you can take it or leave it. I've lived in these here parts most my life. My folks came out here long before there even was an Oregon Trail. Used to be a covered wagon with something of a rare sight around here. Now they's as common as boot leather. Welcome to Fort Kearney. Lieutenant Amos Wilson at your service. 
suppose you started out in independence. Well, you made it a little over 300 miles. And if you're going all the way to Oregon City, you have about 1,500 miles to go. Lots of folks, when they get here, the first thing they want to do is trade away some of their possessions. You'd be surprised with some folks that tried to haul over the trail. Sofas, full-length mirrors. I even saw a baby grand piano one time. I felt kind of sorry for the oxen. Please excuse me. I have some official business to attend to. Howdy, Pilgrim. Hattie Caulfield's name. I reckon you done took me for a man when you first laid eyes on me. Well, look again, I ain't no hairy-faced fella. Of course, I ain't no gusset-up, bonnet-wearing, pie-making female, neither. I just am what I am, and you can take it or leave it. Stock up good on your supplies, you hear? It's a long way to Fort Laramie, and you won't want to be needing for anything at Robidoux Pass. Oh, you'll see what I mean when you get there. Welcome to Fort Kearney. Lieutenant Amos Wilson at your service. Suppose you started out in independence. Well, you made it a little over 300 miles. And if you're going all the way to Oregon City, you have about 1,500 miles to go. Back when I still had both my legs, I had my sights set on becoming a major or a colonel, lead my own regiment in the Indian Wars. Now, I'm just happy to be a lieutenant here at Fort Kearney, being here to help out folks like yourself. Please excuse me, I have some official business to attend to. Well, I tell you a story of the prettiest town in the whole of Ireland. A town cradled by mountains and crowned with the brightest rainbows you'll ever see. A town where the salmon leap out of the river straight into the frying pan. Where the cows give 50 gallons of milk every day and the milk is as sweet as honey. Whisht, aren't I the foolish man to leave a place like that now? But it is the giants you should be hearing about. On moonlit nights, there'd be the devil of a noise as those giants broke each other's skulls. And in the mornings, just a pile of bones would be found where someone's poor cow had stood a few hours before. People who don't make it? who are lying under them grave markers we've passed, didn't make it because they thought in their heads they wouldn't make it. Sure, it's the same way a fellow gets himself sick. Think you're going to get the grip or scurvy, then you get it. Best thing I can say is quit thinking.
Dear Aunt Mary, let me tell you a little about our life on the trail. The children never seem to tire. They are full of energy and inquisitiveness. I love the children. It is a joy to me to tell them stories and keep them busy while their mothers work. Why, sometimes I seize the opportunity to teach them a little about the world around them. Today we caught a lively grasshopper to study. Well, I tell you a story of the prettiest town and people who don't make it. Isn't it grand now to be having a bit of a party? Should I be playing a jig to get your toes a tapping? Or would you like to hear a sweet Irish ballad? Or a love song for the ladies? What's it to be now? Ah, sure, I'll play a jig then. But first I must have a drop of something to wet me lips. <sighs> it's ready I am now. Not one to think about how all these mountains, plains, or rivers got here. I just know it's here to grab hold of with both hands and walk it with my two feet. The children do not seem to notice the miles we have traveled. Every day is an adventure for them, and every night they clamor for me to tell them stories. What are you looking at? Hmm. 
The name's Jack. Last names ain't important among friends. And I am your friend, ain't I? Do you happen to see an old buddy of mine? A lawman named Rufus Reeves. Well, if you do bump into him, you haven't seen me. <laughs> I want to surprise him. Take my advice, friend. If you want to stay out of trouble, keep your eyes on the road ahead of you. And when strangers come a-calling, you keep your mouth shut. What are you looking at? The name's Jack. Isn't it? The I don't mind taking turns at cooking, cleaning, and whatnot. We all take turns to help out when we can. Yes, I'll be happy to trade with you.
That seems like a fair trade to me. Well, how do you do, stranger? It's always a pleasure to meet a new <laughs> customer. Rastus McTavish, that's me. Folks come in here, they got two choices. Pay my prices or do without. <laughs> when you look at it that way, I'd say I've given you a real bargain. Enough of this jawing already. Let's get doing the business. What are you gonna buy? It takes a deal of patience to make a flute like this, but I like to work with wood. I like the smell of it and how it feels in my hands. In Oregon, I'll make tables and chairs and sell them to the immigrants. Everyone will need furniture, so I'll be sure to make my fortune. Paul wants me to work on the farm with him, but working with wood is more agreeable to me. I'll help Pa with the land, but then I'll be off on my own. Dear Aunt Mary, Greetings, my friend. Greetings. How fortunate that you should stop here. I am Dr. Phineas Maximinimus Duffy. Allow me to share with you a most magnificent medicinal mixture. You see, during an excursion to the subcontinent of India, I came across an ancient holy man in the city of Bombay. He was touting the benefits of a powerful potion. Dr. Oomba Boomba's perfect health tonic, he called it. He claimed that a mere spoonful would enable a person to go three days without food or a drop of water and still enjoy the energy and vitality of a dozen men. 
I was skeptical at first, as I'm sure you are as well. But, ha, 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 I gave it a try. Lo and behold, I am here to tell you that it works. For the next two weeks, I survived on nothing more than one small bottle of this potion. And I never felt better in my life. Being a learned man of medicine myself, I made a few refinements to the recipe. And now I present it to you, Dr. Duffy's elixir. Imagine how much easier you might endure this tedious trip if only you had a couple of bottles of this wonderful tonic. What do you say? Greetings, friend. Brewster Lamar at your service. Say, you ain't got a recent newspaper on you, do you? Listen, here's from July 6th, 1847. Pretty near got her memorized. Five, six years ago. They tell me it was most only fur traders coming in here. That's all the fort was back then, you know. A fur trading post. Most folks passing through here, they're like me and Melanie was. Eager as can be to get out west and start a new life. Me, I ain't got nobody to share my dreams with no more. I'm just living right here. One day at a time. See what comes up. Tell you what, friend. I'd like to go on talking with you all day. But I got me some work I got to do. Everyone liked my jackrabbit stew. My mother taught me to make it when I was a young girl on the farm. Of course, our recipe called for a rabbit wearing much shorter ears. <laughs> but the jack worked out just fine. Didn't have my wife long, but I figure I was only born with one heart to give. It's like we was the same, sizing up what Mother Nature had given us. She was a beauty. Being a gal and all, she liked to keep things clean. I figure, why wash up? Just going to get dirty again doing chores the next day. The children. My dear Ma and Pa, every morning we milk our Missy, but there's never time to churn before setting out. I found that if I pour the extra milk in a pail and hang it off the back of the wagon, the jostling on the bumpy trail will make a little butter by the end of the day. A little butter on the table sure lifts the spirit. Didn't have my wife long.
I heard a fella talking about the trail after church one Sunday. His brother's family was out west and had wrote about how wonderful the land was. I mauled on it, and mauled on it, talked to Sally, and mauled on it some more. I wanted to give my family a chance at something better than I had growing up. Our little girl seemed healthy, and when my two sisters agreed to care for mother, well, we decided to go. Dark ain't natural. Can't see. And what I hear, I can only think's what I see. And them are from different places, things. They're looking for us right now. And if and they find us, would take us to where it's always darkness. I know they can't see either. So maybe they won't ever find me. If and they do, I'd give them my fists and not go with.
I didn't have my wife long. Got it. I used to think that for every firefly that be flying, there was a secret to be told. I got me some secrets, plenty of them. Got me a wife, Cordelia, back there in slavery. Got us a son too. His name is Austin, just like my name. I never wanted to leave him down there, but I don't know how I'm gonna get him out of slavery. So I just keep him a secret. Dark ain't natural. Dark ain't natural. Greetings, I am called Washarki. I am chief of the Wind River Shoshone. We have seen your people crossing here and in great numbers. This land has much to help you in your journey, but use it with care and without greed. You must understand this land you tried to possess from sea to sea, like something to hold in your hand. Not so long ago, only Indians were on this land. And the great spirit gave it to us. Each tribe was free to travel with little conflict.
Welcome, traveler. My name is Carlos Marquez. I have many things to sell or trade. Can I interest you in something today? Don't go to the shop. Let the shop come to you. Good day to you, friend. My name is Harmony, Harmony Paxton. It's so nice to make your acquaintance. The Shoshone here are so kind. They have taught me how to make moccasins. I could spend a thousand lifetimes learning their ways. I was born and raised in Pennsylvania. Penn's Woods, you know. It is very beautiful and peaceful there, but an inward light beckoned me to the west. My great-grandparents came to America to escape religious persecution. They were grateful that they were free to worship in their own way, but they were dismayed to find that their African brothers and sisters were not free at all. I think it is safe to tell you I am most proud to say that my mother and father are members of the Underground Railroad back east. Please excuse me. I have other matters to which I must attend. I am from the people you call Shoshone. I am Dancing Water Woman. Wife of the trapper named Roscoe Sibley. My husband has excellent relations with the Shoshone. He has lived and traded with us for many years. He has even learned to speak our language very well. <laughs> but his accent is still strange. My people, the Shoshone, have always been good friends to the wagon people. You will be entering Shoshone land soon after South Pass. Most Shoshone people will treat you well and even help you, but do not abuse our friendship. Treat us well and we will treat you well. Yes, I will trade with you. That is the reason we travel so far from our home. Yes, I like that trade. It is a deal. Yes, I like that trade. It is a deal. Yes, I like that trade. It is a deal. Yes, I like that trade. It is a deal. Yes, I like that trade. It is a deal.
Welcome, traveler. My name is Carlos Marquez. I have many things to sell or trade. Can I interest you in something today? Got it. I used to think that for every firefly that be flying, there was a secret to be told. I got me some secrets, plenty of them. Got me a wife, Cordelia. What does you say, I wonder? I got me this book. Sometimes I just take it out and look at it. One day, I'm going to learn me to read and write. And then I'm going to read all I can find about that place called Africa. Yep, I'm going to learn me about that place. How fearsome are the storms on the prairies. We suffer terror in our hearts, lest the cracks of thunder bring the whole world crashing down on us. All that separates us from a thorough drenching is a flimsy layer of canvas. Yesterday, we were afflicted with hailstones big as marbles. We had to stop and take shelter beneath the wagons for the sake of the little ones. The lightning presents us with an awesome spectacle. We never saw its like back home. I can only look in wonder as it darts its jagged paths over the vast prairie. During the day, I'm seeing things new to me and why I left was to do that. But at night, by the fire, I hear words and stories that are new to me. I like many of them.
I was so busy knitting my mitten, I didn't see you. My name's Amanda. What's yourn? Pa says the next trading post is clear to Fort Boise. <laughs> you ain't got something, you better buy it now. Everything you see here is for sale. That is, everything except this here. This here's my personal property. Pretty, ain't it? Take a listen. If you hold it to your ear, you hear a sound like the ocean. So I'm told. Of course, I never heard the real ocean. Well, I suppose you're wanting to buy some things. If you don't see what you're looking for, just ask. We might have some in back. My dear Ma and Pa, Jeff has had a change of heart about the Indians. He expected them to be savage, but the Indians we've met along the way have impressed him. They helped us find water for the oxen today and pointed out some wild plants that are safe for eating. I picked some for dinner. Blessings and mercies daily attend us. We are making good progress to Oregon. I was riding on ahead today when I met some Indians. They was wearing some pretty fancy clothes and they was as friendly as you please. They came back to camp and some folks traded with them. I bought a buffalo skin to keep me warm at night. Some folks are afraid of the Indians, but we found them to be right civil. I wonder what they think of us. Let's see if this is cool enough to eat yet. There's been little meat, so I decided it was time to come up with a good recipe for rattlesnake. Oh, it's good. Just wait till you taste it. Jeff! Supper's ready whenever you are. Some other
Oh, I never dreamed it could get as hot as this. I'm melting away like a pat of butter in the sun. Let's see if this is cool enough to eat yet. There's been little meat. I was riding on ahead today when I met some in- Yes, I'll be happy to trade with you. That seems like a fair trade to me.
It's many miles we've traveled today, and everyone is happy. I've been getting a mean eye from some of the paws of the gals who've taken a fancy to me. But the gals liking me ain't what's got the old men all head up. They just know they ain't never gonna have the gold or be rich like me. Let one of them show me his fists and I'll whoop them all, I will. It's many miles we've traveled today. Blessings and mercies. Oh, I never dreamed it could get as hot as this. I'm melting away like a pat of butter in the sun. be hot. You can almost bend iron without even building a fire. Howdy. That's how they say hello in these parts. I'm trying to get used to it. In St. Louis, we usually just say hello. I'm Dr. Duncan Gaps, a genuine MD. I hope that you remember to stock up on your supplies. This is an excellent place to do so. A most distinguished gentleman operates the general store here. I was hoping to be farther west by now, but I seem to be stuck here caring for the sick. There have been so many wagons with illness coming through here. Caring for so many people at one time can leave me rather confused. Like telling one illness from another? They don't teach you everything in medical school, you know. Hmm. Just practicing for a game of five-card stud tonight. What do you want? I like the wide open spaces around here. You won't catch me joining the stampede to Oregon. No, sir. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Nope. Aloysius Jones, the name. What's the matter? You ain't never heard nobody called Jones before? Yeah. Well, anyhow. Most folks calls me Shorty. Count I ain't the tallest guy you ever saw. And I ain't really no clerk neither. Bounty hunter, mule skinner, bronco buster. Them's more to my liking. This here's just a tied me over, you know what I mean? Uh, leave me alone now. Can't you see I'm working?
What does you say, I wonder? I got me this book. Sometimes I just take it out and look at it. I was riding on ahead today. I never dreamed it could get as hot as this. I'm melting away like a pat of butter in the sun. Am I glad to see you? <laughs> oh, I'm Private Walter Davis, U.S. Army, 4th Cavalry. <laughs> well, I'm on leave now, headed back to see my family. <laughs> but boy, am I glad to see you! <laughs> we well, had news you were coming from the wagon train ahead of you. <laughs> when you didn't show up by yesterday, well, <sighs> I got the jitters. 
Did you pass the burnt out shell of the Whitman mission? Whew, give me the willies when I seen it. Yes, I am Natalia. You want something to buy? Not so many people come to this fort. I am sometimes very lonely. I am Russian. My husband and I, we wanted to make a new life. We wanted to go to Oregon City, but everything was against us. Bad things happen on the trail. Snow, wind and dust, mosquitoes. Then bandits stole our wagon. Now, here I am, working in this store. It is time. We must do business. These are things you can buy. Boy, am I glad to see you! <laughs> oh. Been some trouble around here with the Cayuse. Well, not that long ago, neither. None of you got the measles, do you? Yep, measles is what started it. A couple of young'uns at the Whitman mission came down with the measles and spread them to the Cayuse, and before they knew it, their whole village was dead or dying. The Cayuse blamed the white folks at the mission. Some warriors swooped down and killed a bunch of them, and Burn the place to the ground. Things have been tense ever since. Well, I don't have that much to offer, but... <laughs> well, sure, I'd be happy to trade with you. Sure seems good to me. It's a deal!
Sure, I never imagined I would be spending me days tramping over such dry, barren countryside. I thought America was a land of milk and honey, a land where the grass grows lush and the cattle are fat. Never in me wildest dreams did I think I'd be crossing such great empty deserts and dusty prairies. I'm thinking that no man would come this way if he knew the hardships and struggles waiting for him. Ah, this Oregon must be a fine place, or I'm a half-witted loon for going to all this trouble to get there. Guess, to be a leader, a fellow's got to know what needs to be done, when to do it, who's to do it. My head already's hurting. Blessings and mercies daily attend us. We are making good... We finally made it. In my whole life, I ain't never felt so drop-dead tired and ready to jump and kick up my feet. Sure, I never imagined I would be spending me days tramping... Welcome! Welcome! You've reached your destination. This is the Oregon City Land Grant Office. I'm the office manager here. My job is to figure out a place for you to live. Now, a lot of settlers have already arrived here, but the Oregon Territory is big. There's still plenty of room for newcomers like yourself. Even so, I don't go giving out big parcels of land to just anybody. You see, we're trying to establish a solid community here. So what we're doing is we're giving the best land to the folks we think will make the most of it. How do we do that? Well, the way we figure it, the more successful you've been on the trail, the more successful you're going to be as a settler. For example, how long did it take you to get here? What kind of shape is your wagon in? How good is your health? These things help me predict how well you're going to do in your new life here. So, I suppose you're anxious to find out where you're going to live. Well, let's step outside so I can take a look at your wagon. Well, come on! Well, you've passed the first test. All the members of your party survived the trip. That's no small accomplishment. Congratulations. Your health appears to be very good. We like to see that. 
It means you'll be able to get right to work and help us build our community. I can tell that you're in good spirits. That's a good sign. In my experience, a happy traveler becomes a successful settler. You've arrived here with a goodly amount of cash. We like that. I trust you'll invest it wisely in endeavors that will foster the growth of our community. My goodness, you have a lot of supplies. I'm surprised your oxen were able to haul such a loaded down wagon. Those supplies will come in very handy. Seems like you made pretty good time getting here. You didn't set any world records, but you took less time than a lot of Congratulations. You've arrived in Oregon City in excellent shape. In fact, I can't remember the last time I saw anybody do as well as you have. I'm going to give you a prime piece of real estate, a beautiful 160-acre estate. Enjoy your new life in the Oregon Territory.